Hello guys, welcome back to the exam series with part 2 of FBG exam preparation. This is Zara, I'm a foreign pharmacist with my channel Pharmacy with Zara. If you haven't checked out part 1st, I suggest you go back before watching this video. Now after getting to know all the documentation requirements for FBG in part 1st of this video, we will now hop on into the actual exam content. Guys, it's really important to understand the competency statement provided by the NABP on their website because it helps specify the weightage of each section in the exam. I will also provide link in the description, so do check it out. So the exam is divided into four main sections. The first one being the basic biomedical sciences, and this portion covers about 10% of the exam, which includes topics like human anatomy, physiology, microbiology, and immunology. Now the second portion, which is the pharmaceutical sciences, and this is a substantial portion accounting for 33% of the exam. Now this portion delves into topics like medicinal chemistry, pharmacology, toxicology, pharmacognosy, pharmaceutics, pharmacokinetics, pharmacogenomics, and compounding. Now the third portion, which is the social, behavioral, and administrative pharmacy sciences. And this portion covers around 22% of the exam. And it includes topics like healthcare delivery systems, pharmacoeconomics, pharmacy practice management, pharmacy law, biostats, ethical decision-making, professional communication, and medication dispensing. Now the last and the biggest portion of the exam, which is the clinical sciences, and it accounts for 35% of the exam. So this section focuses on topics like evidence-based practice, pathophysiology, pharmacokinetics, clinical pharmacogenomics, patient assessment and disease prevention, clinical pharmacology, and therapeutic decision-making. Now let's talk about some of the highly recommended books for FPG exam preparation. Before moving on to the books, if you are finding value in my channel, subscribe and give a thumbs up. Guys, while there is no such thing as a single official book to cover everything on the exam, but these are some highly effective books that I personally use to pass my exam. So the first book is the APHA Complete Pharmacy Review for FPG. And this book is actually developed by the pharmacists associated with the American Pharmacy Board. And guys, this book is almost a complete package because it covers everything from basic biomedical sciences to pharmaceutical and clinical sciences. And when I was preparing for FPG, I didn't pay much attention to topics like ethics, professional communication, pharmacy leadership, and trust me guys, those questions actually came in the exam. So please, please, please do spend considerable amount of time on those chapters and you will thank me later. This book also includes study tips and practice questions at the end of each chapter. I will include the link in the description, you can check it out. Also, do memorize the mathematical formulas mentioned in this book because lots of math questions came in my exam that were entirely based on the formula. So if you know the formula, you are able to solve it like this. And a good news that you don't need to memorize any brand names because those are not covered in the exam. So stick to your generics. And if you are still struggling with the process and exam, do check out my website for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. The second book is The Pharmacology by Lippincott. I have the seventh edition, but there's a latest eighth edition out as well. Now this book is purely for pharmacology, for main drugs for major diseases. So Pharmacology by Lippincott covers topics all the way from autonomic nervous system to CNS, cardio, endocrinology, and chemotherapeutics. So I suggest you guys to study this whole book. Also, one thing that I love about this book is that they have included a list of drug classifications at the start of each chapter, which makes it super easy to memorize the drugs. And if you want all of that combined in a print-ready form to paste it on your walls, you can check out my website provided in the description. So this book is neither too short or too detailed, and it contains the exact amount of information that you need to know for the exam. Because FPG is not a very detailed exam, and they just test your superficial knowledge. All the clinical details would be covered in your Netflix. Now the third book is the Comprehensive Pharmacy Review for Netflix. Now, although they claim to be designed for Netflix, but trust me, nobody ever uses it for Netflix. We got other better resources for that. Guys, this book looks too bulky, but we are going to cover some selective topics from this book that I'm going to tell at the end of this video. 
So with this book, I covered mostly the medicinal chemistry chapters because those weren't explained too well in Lippincott or APHA. So not only you have to practice the structures, but you gotta know how to identify a structure, the structure activity relationship, what functional groups cause a structure to be more hydrophilic or lipophilic. So you gotta know all the ins and outs of the structure. Identifying a structure alone is just not enough for this exam. And that's why to make it easy for you guys, I've provided my detailed notes on structures with their activities and drug regulatory laws under one package on my website. So do check it out. So what I did to memorize these structures and their activities is that I drew the structures with their detailed activity on the paper and then I pasted it on the walls. So that way I would view the structures every day. Now guys, let me be honest. A major portion of the exam covers structures and math. Now there were lots of people in my time who skipped the structures and trust me, like 20 questions from structures and 20 from math came in my exam. So I know this portion is really tough, but if you practice it every day, it's a life savior. Now the next two resources are for the MCQs. The first one is the RX exam by Menon Shroff. And this is a very popular book among students. And it contains tons of MCQs with correct answers and detailed explanations at the end of the book. They also have a separate version for the math MCQs with detailed method to solve each question at the back of the book. And the second one is the FBG Seeger Study Guide by Momatrix. This is also a very popular book. Now I will tell you what chapter to cover from each book. I highly recommend you guys to take a printout of a competency statement like this and mark each chapter as we go to stay organized. So we will start off with the area one, which is basic biomedical sciences, which includes physiology, biochemistry, micro, and immunology. So we will cover the physiology and biochemistry from APHA. So I will write a little A with both of these. Then the micro will be covered by the CPR. And the fourth one, immunology, it will be covered either by CPR or APHA. Now the second area is pharmaceutical sciences. The first one is the medicinal chemistry. Now this portion would be covered by CPR and I will also tell you what chapters are those in the book. So it's gonna be the chapter eight, drug metabolism, prodrugs, and pharmacogenetics, all the way to chapter 12, which is pharmacology and medicinal chemistry of endocrine and related drugs. So these are the five chapters that you will cover from CPR. Now the second one is pharmacology and toxicology. This portion you can cover either from Lippincott or APHA. Now the third portion we have is pharmacognosy and dietary supplements. So this portion you can cover either from CPR or APHA. It's included in both of the books. Now the fourth part which is Pharmaceutics and biopharmaceutics. This portion you can cover from APHA because that's only covered in this book. Now we have pharmacokinetics. And this portion would be covered by either Lippincourt or APHA. Now we have pharmacogenomics and genetics. This portion you will cover from APHA. After that, we are moving on to the sterile and non-sterile compounding. You can either cover it from APHA or CPR. Now the third area is the social behavioral administrative sciences. The first one is the healthcare delivery systems and public health. We will cover this portion from APHA. Now the second one is the population-based care and pharmacoepidemiology. This portion would also be covered by APHA. Now the third, we have economic and humanistic outcomes of healthcare delivery. This portion would be covered by CPR. Now the fourth one is pharmacy practice management, and this you can cover from APHA. Now the fifth one is the pharmacy law and regulatory affairs. This portion is covered by CPR but I believe it's too extensive and you don't need to go into too much details. So I've uploaded my notes on pharmacy law on my website. You can check it out. Then we have the biostats and research design. This portion you can cover it from either APHA or CPR. 
Now moving on to the ethical decision making and professional communications. Both of these portions will be covered by APHA. Including the social and behavioral aspects of pharmacy practice. Now we have medication dispensing and distribution systems. This portion will be covered in CPR. Now we have area four, which is clinical sciences. The first one is the evidence based practice. This portion will be covered in the APHA. Now we have the clinical pathophysiology, it's also covered in APHA. Then we have the clinical pharmacokinetics. This portion you can either do from Lippincott or APHA. Then we have the clinical pharmacogenomics and disease prevention and population health. And then we have the patient assessment. All of these portions will be covered in APHA. Now the last and final portion, which is the clinical pharmacology and therapeutic decision making, you can cover it either from APHA or Lippincott. Now that was all about what you need to cover from each book. And it took me about three months to prepare for our FBG. And if I can do it, you guys can do it as well. So after you guys are done studying all of the material, I highly recommend you guys take a pre-FBG exam by NABP. It is a $75 Word online practice exam utilizing the past exam questions and familiarizing the candidates with the format and question types in the actual exam. I scored a 98 on the pre-FBG and a 95 in the actual exam. Pretty close, right? So if you score anything above 80, you should be good. And I suggest you guys take pre-FBG two weeks before your actual exam so that you have enough time to work on your weaker areas. Now that was all about FBG, and if you watch my video till the very end, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.